Welcome back to our YouTube channel. I'm Daniel. Part of what our main mission is here at Bright Trip is to have informed travel, which is very different than the travel that we see all over the internet and all over Instagram, which is just going somewhere for a photograph. If you go somewhere for a photograph, you're gonna walk into an amazing place, look at one portion of it in one way, and then leave and have a picture on your wall. We want to give you a way of having an informed travel experience. So that you show up to a place, you understand the culture, you understand the history, and you can see firsthand what is going on. Our South Africa course is a really good example of one of these lessons. And so I'm gonna show you in this video today one of our lessons of that South Africa course. And so I'm gonna pass this off to Justin and let him explain to you a little bit about the history of Cape Town. The earliest record of human activity in Cape Town dates back more than 12,000 years. But since there was no written record, we know basically nothing about Cape Town until 1488. That's when a ship of Portuguese explorers were sailing down the west coast of Africa, and they came upon this unique looking bay and found local tribes that were trading with each other throughout the region. And the original name that these Portuguese sailors gave to this place was the Cape of Storms. As you can imagine, that name was a bit grim. So it was later changed to Cape of Good Hope to signify the optimism the Cape brought as ships finally got to the end of the continent and then turned up into the Indian Ocean, where most of these European ships at the time were headed. Now, Cape Town was eventually taken over by the Dutch, which is a major part of their history and modern day culture. And in the beginning, the Dutch needed people to work on their farms as they grew this new settlement. So in addition to importing slaves from Asia, they also sent Dutch citizens to move to Cape Town to work. And during this time, the Dutch brought tons of new plants to Cape Town, including grapes for wine, citrus, potatoes, and wheat, a lot of which had massive effects on the local economy and are still present today. Now, after more than 100 years of Dutch ruling this area, the British came in and captured it all and soon enforced anti-Dutch policies that were meant to rid this new area of the Dutch language and culture. And despite having been there for generations, the Dutch ended up moving inland into South Africa and forming their own new communities. These Dutch speaking Africans are known as Boers and they speak a language called Afrikaans, which is a mix between Dutch and the local dialects. And today, Afrikaans is still an official language of South Africa. And while these Dutch settlers lived in the same regions as other African tribes, they immediately implemented laws that would keep them from mixing with black natives. Once gold and diamonds were discovered, the British took major notice and increased their control to places that previously they had kind of ignored. And this caused major conflicts with local tribes all over South Africa and the British fought wars with both the Dutch descendants as well as other major tribes like the Zulus. By the 1900s, the British had won all the wars, yes, but it came at a very high cost. They decided to consolidate all the British colonies in South Africa into one South African Republic and to grant them a constitution preparing them for independence from Britain. Now, this transfer of power happened slowly, over the course of decades, and the power was transferred mainly to white Afrikaners, as well as English-speaking whites who were left over from the British era. Even though these white natives represented only about 20% of the population, they were basically given all the power. Black South Africans had little participation in the newly independent country, a country that was already highly divided. And not soon after, the country would begin writing laws that would divide the nation even further. By the 1950s, each citizen was placed into a ranking system based on their race and their color. According to this system, white citizens had the highest status, followed by Asians, colored, and then black Africans. The white minority implemented more and more laws each year that deepened their power over others, and soon blacks and whites were separated in everything. Where they could live, what jobs they could get, what education they received, who they could marry, you name it. By the 1960s, nationwide laws had made it illegal for blacks and whites to live in the same towns. 
Over the next two decades, more than 3.5 million black South Africans were forcibly evicted from their homes and relocated to segregated cities known as townships. It was one of the largest mass evictions in history. In Cape Town specifically, over the course of one month in 1986, nearly 70,000 people were evicted. During these years, black political parties did organize and protest, but were highly suppressed and many of their leaders fled or were thrown into prison. The most notable of which was Nelson Mandela, who was arrested in 1962 and given a life sentence. This brutal segregation continued and increased for decades, but slowly and finally, things began to change. Internal unrest and international condemnation led to dramatic changes beginning in 1989. The ruling government started by lifting the ban on political black parties and then instituted freedom of the press and released all political prisoners. And on February 11th, 1990, Nelson Mandela, the symbol of black liberation, walked out of prison after 27 years. For the first time, the government allowed real elections. And in 1994, Mandela was elected as the first black president of South Africa. Now, I wanna be clear, this is a highly oversimplified version of the deep and very controversial past of Cape Town, especially in terms of the political and social oppression that was happening during apartheid. We barely even scratched the surface. Even though the country has made huge strides in the last 30 years, undoing centuries of legislation and segregation doesn't happen overnight. And in the next lesson, we'll go over what Cape Town and South Africa looks like today. I hope this video has been insightful, not only to the history of South Africa, but to show you how we want to help you be a more informed traveler, and also how to think about traveling in an informed way on your own. If you want to learn more about various places or see more of our courses, head over to brighttrip.com. The link is gonna be in the description, and we would love to see you over there. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you very soon. See ya.